This is University of California, Berkeley, the top ranked school in the world based on almost every list of public universities. Getting admitted to UC Berkeley was a bit of a shock. I actually committed to a different school the prior year, but sometimes life throws twists and turns at you, and it takes years to know whether or not you came out the other side in one healthy piece. If you want to know more about the journey of twists and turns that led me to Berkeley, I suggest first watching the video about my experience as a fine arts major at Sacramento City College, because what you're about to watch is the direct sequel to that video. And if this video seems familiar to you, it's because I made a different, much worse version last year in which I basically just complained for six minutes. Now, while me sitting and complaining for six minutes straight isn't entirely off-brand for me, and trust me, this video will have plenty of complaining, I figured I'd give you a much more useful video now that I actually understand filmmaking and storytelling. So in this video, I'll talk about the campus atmosphere, student life, my non-major classes, and my experience as an art major. I had school spirit and wore it proudly and often, though it never manifested in going to a football game. I still to this day haven't been to one, but I am proud of what the Cal Bear alums have accomplished at the next level. I did however go to a couple of basketball games, one of which was a thrilling overtime upset over UCLA where students stormed the floor. Just walking around campus gives you this feeling that you're part of history, that you're either standing or walking in the same footsteps of many giants of the past, whether they're students, faculty, or legendary guest speakers. For me, student life revolved around the dorms as this is where I made the bulk of my friendships. Unlike junior college, moving day at a university feels like a big event, probably because universities actually have them. Move-in day is one of those defining ceremonial days in a person's life. For many, this day marks the first time the little birdies leave the nest for an extended period of time. In a perfect world, I'd say forever instead of extended period of time, but let's face it, most are going to be right back at home the second they graduate. This goes double for people like me who majored in unemployment. I mean art. Hey, I didn't become a content creator to tell my fellow artists and designers what they want to hear. I became a content creator to tell my fellow artists and designers what they need to hear. And I feel the need to say this because I know many of you found me because you're aspiring creative professionals, or you found this video because you want to major in art. Anyway, let me get off my soapbox and get us back on track. So where were we? Ah yes, move in day and move in week. I moved into Ida Sproul, the western building of Unit 3, which is one of, if not the oldest UC Berkeley housing complex. Unit 3 buildings are basically the newcomer dorms, the one most incoming freshmen and junior college transfers get stuffed into. For you incoming bears, I'll explain the beginning of dorm life based on my experience. On move-in day, you meet your resident assistant, better known as your RA, and you meet your roommates. The rest of move-in week is likely when you'll decide whether you'll be the social type by meeting the rest of the people who live on your floor, or the antisocial type who has no use for them and will keep to yourself for the semester, or year. You'll also do some campus exploring during this week, some solo, and some with people you just met. Oh, and there's a bunch of Greek stuff that happens during this week, and I'm proud to say I'm the least qualified to speak about it. All I know is that if you want to join a fraternity or sorority, the process probably begins during this week. As for social life in the dorms, it can be a bit clicky. You have an inner circle, a middle circle, and an outer circle. The inner circle is made up of either roommates or select one or two people on the floor you get close to and spend most of your discretionary time with. The middle circle is made up of a larger group of people on your floor who may collectively partake in activities together such as dorm room parties and trips to and around campus. Those also involving parties, usually on frat row. You can also have more than one inner circle. And of course, the outer circle is made up of those who live on your floor who you'll almost never talk to. This can be for a number of reasons. They either keep to themselves or they keep to their inner circles, they're barely ever seen in the dorms, or you just didn't vibe with them when you met. I should say that both social life and academics can heavily influence a college student's mental well-being. At highly competitive academic schools, depression is quite common and sometimes able to be self-diagnosed. 
for me, severe depression basically kept me out of class for the entire month of October 2010. The simple act of just getting out of bed was difficult, and during that period I couldn't even fathom the amount of energy and motivation I would have needed to actually go to class. You better believe I got visits from concerned floor mates and even a concerned RA. Most of the depression I've suffered throughout my life has been tied to loneliness, and college was definitely no exception. In fact, college can intensify loneliness-based depression. If you struggle with loneliness and you live in a housing complex, you will have trouble escaping the psychological hell that is your social life. I say this because in dorms you will regularly witness floor mates pairing up, hooking up, dating, or frankly doing anything and everything that reminds you how alone you are, especially if some of the dorm mates you witness pairing up are people you want to be more than friends with. And in this case there is no escape from that emotional pain because the stimuli is constant and right in front of your face. For me no healthy emotional outlet existed since I couldn't find a single campus club outside of sports that interested me and I almost immediately lost interest in each of the club sports I briefly joined despite being fairly confident I could have excelled at any one. In other club news, I made an unsuccessful ASUC Senate run in spring 2011, though I did get to show off my mediocre art skills while campaigning. And in case you're wondering, ASUC is basically a campus-wide student government that I imagine exists for the sole purpose of giving aspiring grad students an air quote leadership role to put on their grad school applications. Not being one of the 20 nominees came as no surprise for someone not part of Greek life and all of the built-in support and resources that come with selling your soul to those frats. Here I'd make a joke about how soundly I got defeated, except that I have no idea where I actually finished. Election night took place in a tiny overpacked room that made it impossible to see the results unless you were directly in front of the screen that actually showed the results. The school paper the next day showed the 20 nominees, but no one else. So I have no idea whether I finished 21st or 121st. I'm guessing that only about a fourth of my friends who said that they were going to vote for me actually went out and did. <laughs> On to academics where I'll begin with the non-major stuff. I took a lot of GPA killing math courses as well as environmental design courses. At Berkeley, environmental design refers to courses in architecture, city and regional planning, and landscape architecture. I didn't have to take the math classes, but I like math, so I decided to take them. Don't do what I did. In fact, if you have a project-based major like art practice or architecture, it's probably best to avoid any problem set class that you're not required to take, unless of course you have a thing against sleep. I also had to take a US history class because it was a University of California requirement that I didn't fulfill in junior college. Okay, so I saved my major to the end because there's a lot to unpack here. In addition to basic info about the art major, I'll talk about courses, critiques, faculty, and my fellow students in this department. At UC Berkeley, the art major is officially called Art Practice. Classes are held primarily in Kroeber Hall and secondarily in Worcester Hall. Kroeber Hall is split between the Art and Anthropology departments, whereas Worcester Hall is split between Art and College of Environmental Design, with Environmental Design, as mentioned before, encompassing architecture, city and regional planning, and landscape architecture. At UC Berkeley, undergraduate students take lower division courses before declaring a major, and then upper division courses usually after declaring a major. Lower division classes are listed as the department followed by a number less than 100. Upper division courses are listed as the department followed by a number from 100 to 199. And graduate courses are listed as the department followed by a number 200 plus. Because I arrived as a junior transfer who already took lower division courses in community college, I immediately began taking upper division courses in my first semester. The only exception is Art 8, which isn't offered outside of Berkeley, so even transfers are required to take it. Here's a list of courses I took from the art department. A deep dive into these is worth its own separate video, but for now I'll try to give the broad strokes. I'm sorry, it was really hard to think of art jokes while writing this script. <laughs> Anyway, in fall 2010, I took Art 8, Introduction to Visual Thinking, and Art 171, Digital Video. Art 8 basically introduces students to the program by exploring the visual world. Art 171 back in 2010 was a digital video course in which students captured video using mini DV camcorders along with mini DV tapes before editing footage in Final Cut Pro. I'm guessing the workflow is quite a bit different now. The following semester I took Art 117, Drawing Composition, and Art 160, Special Topics in Visual Studies. Art 117 is exactly what it sounds like, a drawing course. It's now listed as Advanced Drawing, Research, and Methods. Art 160 is a little tricky to explain because it varies depending on the semester, and the specific course I took isn't easy to explain. 
but the one I took can best be described as a 2D animation course as it applies to interactive storytelling. In the summer of that year, I took Global Perspectives in Contemporary Art and Art 172 CGI Animation Studies. Art 119 is basically a contemporary art history course given in the art department. Art 172 is a 3D animation, modeling, and rendering course that teaches students they'll never be good enough to work at Pixar. I no longer see this class listed on the art department's website. Fall 2011 was the only semester I didn't take an art class, yet I felt more creative this semester than I did in any other semester. Why? Because I took an architecture course and a city planning course. The fact that this semester brought out the most of my creative curiosity was the first major sign that I was more destined for a future in design than a future in art. The second major sign came the following spring in my senior projects class. In spring 2012, I enrolled in Art 130, Advanced Sculpture, Concept, and Construction, Art 185, Senior Projects, and Art History 108, Cities and the Arts. Art 130 is exactly what it sounds like, a sculpture class. Art 185 is the course where you as a senior focus on one project of your choosing to work on throughout your final semester. Mine was a design concept of an arena for the Sacramento Kings because at the time, the basketball franchise had owners who threatened to move the team if they didn't get a new arena. My project was understandably criticized for being more architecture than art, but College Raymond didn't care because he was driven more by his fear of entering the job market unemployable than he was by pure artistic creativity. About that art history course I enrolled in that semester, I waited as long as possible before finally taking this requirement because all art majors need to take a course from the art history department, whether we want to or not. I don't remember much from Art History 108 aside from its focus on Italian cities because I eventually dropped this course mid-semester in favor of the much more interesting History of Photography course that I would take that summer. I don't think I need to explain what Art History in 182 is about, but if UC Berkeley still offers it, then you'll enjoy analyzing some of the oldest photographs ever taken. I suppose you could just Google them too. Now that I've gone through the courses I took, I want to briefly go over the nature of critiques. From what I recall, in each art class, each student usually gets about five minutes to have her or his midterm or final project critiqued. I have mixed feelings about this because one, critiques are incredibly boring, and two, I don't think they represent the real world of art where attention is commanded and not demanded. What I mean by that is, in the harsh reality of the creative world, the attention a particular piece of work gets is tied to the nature and quality of the work itself as opposed to some rule that each piece must get the same X amount of minutes of attention. On the other hand, in a space that is paid for by each student, an academic environment is perhaps the only chance a developing artist can receive valuable feedback that will enable that artist to grow effectively, which can only be achieved if that artist's work is guaranteed attention no matter what. Now let's talk about faculty. They definitely understand the ins and outs of the art world. Right off the bat, you can assume each of your instructors hold MFAs and are active practicing artists in the fields they teach. Based solely on my anecdotal experience, some teachers will like you more than others will. In fact, some definitely had their favorite students, and I wouldn't doubt that there is a correlation between this and which students graduated with honors. This really shouldn't shock anyone considering how personality-based the art discipline is. Do you believe famous artists become famous solely because they do great work? You can answer this by going to creative portfolio websites to discover the sheer amount of impressive projects by artists you've never heard of. So it's likely that the artists you've heard of became famous because they had good business skills, primarily networking. Networking for many professionals begins in college by developing positive relationships with instructors and classmates. As far as my relationship with professors and classmates, I wouldn't say I got particularly close to anyone. My reputation was a mixed bag. You could easily tell by the way teachers interacted with students who their favorites were, and I by no means was any teacher's favorite. <laughs> Perhaps some of my instructors were put off by the impression I gave them that I just wasn't that into the material. One teacher even claimed during a midterm evaluation that I'm a great artist, but that I just don't seem to care very much. This might be why the students they gravitated toward and even befriended were the ones who seemed to have either a passion for a particular medium or a passion for a particular subject they could create inspired art around. Admittedly, I don't recall possessing either of those as a student. And in fact, it often felt like I spent my entire two years in Berkeley desperately searching for a passion. Speaking of classmates, I got along okay with them, even though I didn't get particularly close to them. Aside from one classmate who's still to this day the only woman I've ever gone on more than one date with, I basically maintained what felt like friendly business relationships with other art students. So needless to say, I didn't exactly form any lifelong friendships with the other art students. 
In terms of Facebook friends, I'm still hanging on to about a third of the art majors I was originally Facebook friends with. So apparently they didn't all hate me. <laughs> anyway, I couldn't think of a dramatic way of ending this the way I did with my junior college video, nor could I think of a way of bridging this with my graduate school experience. So I'll send you off with this. It is a disturbing fact to me, and it may be to some of you, that the new frontier owes as much to Berkeley as it does to Harvard University. <laughs> <laughs>